We're down here at Preston New Road in Lancashire where Quadrilla are attempting to set up the first commercial scale fracking site to extract fracked gas from this area. It's really the flagship site for the fracking industry and for their backers, the Tories in government. This is a site that all eyes are on, both the industry and both the anti-fracking movement. What happens here is a bit of a litmus test for the fracking industry in the rest of the UK. It's been banned in France, there's monitoriums in Germany, Scotland's banned it, parts of Ireland have banned it. Um, New York State. So we're, we're really behind. And you can tell when you come to the site, there, fracking has no social license wherever it goes. You've seen in Barton Moss and Balcom this, the sheer resistance and it is a lot of local people. The local community here have done an amazing job for the past five or six years fighting off Cordula. Ever since Cordula caused an earthquake here at Priest Hall back in 2011. We set up camp in 2014. The share price for iGas at that time is about one pound. It's now dropped to uh, about three pence. Every day that we slow it down, it's a message to the investors, isn't it, that it's not really going anywhere. We've had the we've had the planning inquiry. We thought we'd won. That was two years ago. We celebrated winning at El Lancashire County Council because the planning application was turned down. But unfortunately, there was a subsequent appeal and a judicial review. And then Savage Javid from Westminster, just one man, overturned the decision. And so we feel like we're fighting for democracy as well. I never once thought I would be described as an activist. I've lived my life here for much of it in a very quiet town. I'm not a NIMBY, I don't want fracking here, and I don't want fracking anywhere. I don't believe it's safe, and I think whatever they tell you about regulations, it's never, ever, ever going to be enough. The regulatory bodies that are here, allegedly to protect us, are toothless in the face of a central government that has decided that we here in Lancashire and Yorkshire will be a sacrifice zone. We are going to be an experiment for a highly dangerous industry. Since they've started construction, they've been slowed down every step of the way. We were here when the first AEA lawyer was leaving and uh, we slowed it down for four hours. And just recently we've had five lock-ons straight in five days. On Monday, I lay down in the road with 13 local people and took direct action to prevent a day's work on site. I didn't, I didn't want to do that, but I felt I was left with very little choice but to do that. Because whatever um, traditional form of protest we have taken, writing letters, making telephone calls, it's fallen on deaf ears. No, you won't move. No, no, I'm just saying I don't think it's happy. What? The phone is a civil engineer's report. Oh, right. Oh, okay. You have just got a lady's bra out in public, dragging her across the road to facilitate a lorry. How do you feel, 149? How do you feel, 149? People are throwing themselves in front of lorries, they're getting their hands in tubes, people are climbing on top of lorries, people are locking themselves in cars. You can see the quadrilla staff becoming more and more violent. One of the site managers strangling a member of the Reclaim the Power. They do what they like, it is facilitated by the police. The decisions obviously come from the top down. I mean, we've never had a problem with the police. I've never been brought up to have a problem with the police. I actually worked for five years at the local police station. I tell you something now, I wouldn't... I hate them. I absolutely hate every single one of them. And that's massive because it's going to have such long, long, far-reaching consequences, you know? Mm. I don't want, I wouldn't trust any of them. I would never help them. I would never speak to them. I absolutely hate them. And that's not because of what I've heard. It's what I've seen with my own eyes in this last six months of their outrageous lies, their violence. They do anything to get them wagons on site. And they don't care who they trample over in the process, whether it's kids disabled, the injuries have been horrific. Say they lock on at four or five in the morning, traffic will flow freely for four or five hours. Then the vans will come and make what they call a sterile area to cut them off. 
on the shut the roads as long as they can and the tweeting the police on the police website uh, we're really sorry to local people for the inconvenience we've had to shut the road because of people locked on you know lie 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 anytime they shut the road to facilitate convoys to come on they they run to the end of the traffic and say sorry it's because the protesters in the road you know they absolutely blatantly lie my union is one of a growing number that recognizes that climate is a trade union issue we've had a long-standing opposition to fracking we campaign amongst other unions and alongside other unions as well. We think it's very important that trade unionists come and support the protests here because what we're doing here is obviously not just preventing something that we know poses a massive public health risk, uh, that we think that there is an alternative. And my union has worked with academics and environmental campaigners and the Climate Jobs Initiative. And the tragedy here is instead of ripping up the countryside, we should be investing in skilled unionised jobs in offshore wind, in wave technology, and the File Coast is of course perfect for that particular purpose. We made a, an early estimation, you could be creating 20 to 30,000 jobs on the file coast with the necessary investment. And these are not temporary, short-term jobs offered by the fracking industry. These are real, long-term, skilled jobs that could have a very important role in developing the local economy and, of course, cutting CO2 emissions. We came here in 2014 to support the Nanners when uh, they were highlighting that this was coming. Um, but we're back here in 2017 now that the, the drilling equipment is being pulled on site. And what's being run by Reclaim Power is a month of rolling resistance. Uh, and what that involves is people turning up, getting trained, um, forming affinity groups and taking action against the fracking industry. So we've got workshops on direct action training, know your rights, legal training, cooking for lots of people so we can feed everyone here. Other workshops about renewable energy and alternatives to fracking. All sorts of things going on for people to come along and get involved in. In collaboration with the local group, Frack Free Lancashire, and Frack Off and others, we've set up a community info hub down at Maple Farm. Uh, to kind of provide a base for people to come back, get a cup of tea, rest, pick up some materials, some flyers about fracking, set up a little comms tent for people to do social media and press work. We set up a kitchen so people can cook for people en masse to keep everyone happy and fed. So we're really trying to ramp up the resistance here to support the resistance that's already been happening every day since Quadrilla started building this frat pad in January 2017. Unless we rise up and we fight this industry, it will take hold. So whatever happens on Preston New Road, it is the battle for our futures, for our kids' futures and their futures. Imagine